you ever wonder how artists face the daunting blank canvas? Let me show you my approach to this intimidating step. Hi there, I'm Janine, I'm an artist and I share my creative journey on this channel. It's very exciting but also quite scary starting a new series of painting or even just a single painting. I'm sure you can relate to the fear of the blank page. I like to sort of cheat by using up leftover paint to play on a fresh canvas. That way I feel like I'm not really working on a painting yet. I'm just playing with paint I don't need anymore so the bar's really low. First I select a few basic tools like my catalyst wedge and a large brush. I start by putting a little bit of water on the canvas because I really enjoy wet and wet effects. I keep on building the first layer with paint and diluting it with water. This way I already get a lot of movement in the first layer. All the paints I'm using at the moment are left over from a previous series and I haven't got any plans to use them otherwise, so I'm just getting rid of them here. Again I'm adding a little bit of water to dilute some of the paint and then I scrape it with my catalyst wedge just to give it a different texture and because I'm a little bit bored with the brush already. <laughs> To the next one. I'm pretty much doing the same here, just adding paint, painting the edges and adding little bits of water as I go. If you're interested, the size of these larger ones are 80 by 80 centimeters for the square one and this one is 60 by a meter. I really like how one half is a little bit more solid paint and the other one's much more transparent. By that point I'd used up most of the green, so I'm switching to this dark red. very much like the soft effects that I've created in this first layer already. Apart from these four large ones, I also have four panels that are 50 by 50 and nine panels that are 20 by 20 centimeters, simply to add a lot of variety to my process. Some of the paint had already dried up quite a bit so I had to mix in a lot of water to make it workable again. And I'm wiping the excess paint from my palette knife onto the panel. Then I switch to a larger brush. It's really fun working on several pieces at once like this. I've never had the space to just have several pieces right in front of me. I always have to put one aside and I really enjoy doing this parallel work. These are the smaller pieces. They're smaller than my usual 30 by 30 panels. But I love how big all the gestures are with a normal sized brush. It's so important to have the right size tool for the size of your surface. It just makes an incredible difference if you've got a brush that's too small for your canvas. If you're wondering, I've sealed all my wood panels with a layer of gloss medium and then I added two layers of gesso on each and the canvases have quite a few layers of gesso. 
I would have waited to film till it's light outside again, but I was too excited so I did paint in the dark, so apologize for the lighting. I'm already adding more layers to my large pieces. I really love this panel, it's actually one of my favourites at the moment and I'm scared to ruin it so I haven't worked on it very much since. I just really like the softness and that it's still quite gestural marks on there. This one's quite wild but as you know I do add layers and layers on my paintings so it doesn't really matter what happens in these early layers. Actually the more texture and colour the better I think because I can always cover it up later and all the textures and marks create interest that shine through the later layers. If you want to know how I did mix these colours originally, I'll link my video down below where I show how I created my colour palette for this last series and mixed all the colours. I haven't used this Japanese brush much in the past, but I do really enjoy how soft it feels when you apply the paint. The bristles are super soft and it's quite a large one for its type. Of course, I'll link it down below for you. If you like this video, consider subscribing. This is that Japanese brush again. It's basically a thinner version of that makeup brush. That's how it feels like working with it. I noticed that I'm doing a lot of these swirly marks. Not quite sure what they're about yet, but I do really enjoy making them and also quite like how they look. I'm really not worried about how these early layers look as they will just be obliterated by later layers. Having said that, I do find that what I do in these early layers often gives me a sense of direction where I want to go with this series. Looking back at this, it would have been way better to use a larger brush. It took me forever to cover the surface area of this canvas because the brush was so small in comparison to the size of the canvas. And also I didn't dilute the paint as much here as I did when I had the other canvases on a flat surface because I didn't like how it kept on dripping on the vertical. 
Here I do use quite a bit of water to dilute it though. That's why I'm holding the water bucket like it's a little treasure. The light kept on changing here, so I'm really sorry about that. This is a much warmer orangey colour that I'm adding here. The previous colours were all very cool, but I loved how this added quite a lot of warmth. The brush I'm using here is actually a very cheap makeup brush. It is so soft and creates amazing soft effects but also it just feels really nice to work with as the paint goes on so smoothly. I love how freeing it is to just play with the paint without an outcome in mind. I try to approach my whole painting process in this playful way. Already starting with this playful approach helps me practice not taking the process too seriously for later stages. If you want to see me start one of my previous painting series, then you can watch that video up here. Thanks and bye bye!